Hello fellows and family, how are you? Welcome you again to this live broadcast. I hope you are doing great wherever you are. Uh, and I want to share with us very important topic today, which I titled The Fool in Psalm 14. I've seen and I've heard many Christians, even the ones that don't know anything in the Bible, they, they, they don't know what the Bible says about them in particular. And when you bring some portions of Bible to them, they don't know a jack. Even ordinary John chapter 3, 16, they cannot like read it as it's written in their Bible. You know, but these people, anytime you speak of an imaginary God not existing or the God of Christianity, the God they embrace as their God, although they have not and they cannot see this God. When you tell them that God does not exist, that it was forced on us by our slave masters, guess what? They run to Psalm 14 verse 1. It was only a fool that we said there is no God. But Psalm 14 one never said that a fool said there is no God, no. He never said the fool said there is no God. It is not found anywhere in the Bible. No one can say there is no God. If you understand what God really is or who God really is. What the Bible says, what Psalm 14 verse 1 and Psalm 53 verse 1 said, is that the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Now, do you know what is in somebody's heart? No. So how do you know what somebody else is saying? The person that wrote that in the Bible was speaking about himself. He is the fool. You know, when you say like, oh, it, uh, anybody that says something is a fool, that's you that said that. That doesn't mean it's true. Anyone that opposes Trump is a fool. That's you that said that. But that's crap. It's not truth and they can never be truth. Because so long you are in politics, people will be opposing you. Okay, so when, when you read in your Bible, it said the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. So the person that wrote that is actually the person saying that. So you believe that was written by or said by King David. So David was the fool that said in his heart, although he believed in the law, although he consulted the priest or, or the high priest and going war, for war, killing people in the name of God. But in his heart, he know there is no God. And this is the truth. There is no almighty God anywhere controlling what is happening in the world. No almighty God in heaven or in the sky or wherever controlling the affairs of life. Anyone that believes that is the real fool. Because a fool is someone that deficient, deficient in judgment, in 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 in, in, in reason, and in and in understanding. When you are, when you can't use your judgment, when you cannot reason, when you cannot um, understand simple something, you are a fool. So when you say you believe there is one almighty God somewhere, you don't know the place, you don't know the, the, the location, you don't know anything about that God, and you say you cannot see that God, but you believe you can hear, him, or some people are hearing his voice, you are a fool. You, with your mouth, although you said there is God, but in your heart, you know there is no God, especially when things happen. Things you believe you cannot handle. You're supposed to know that God, the God you believe in is supposed to handle it since you are, you see yourself as not almighty, but you have almighty God you believe in. So that almighty God is supposed to handle that issue, supposed to handle that situation and prevent evil from coming to you. Since you believe you cannot prevent evil, then you are almighty God is supposed to prevent that evil. But if that almighty God fails to prevent that evil, that almighty God is dead. That God does not exist. You were just meant to believe such God exists. But such God does not exist. 
It's like somebody telling you to believe there is Spider-Man. Spider-Man exists in America. Because you watch it in the movie, you say, okay, you believe Spider-Man exists. It's like somebody telling you to believe that Santa Claus exists because people celebrate that during Christmas. Children believe it does some magic for them. And you believe the same, the same way. What, there's nothing you, there's nothing make you different from the children that believe in Santa Claus. If you believe in God Jehovah, if you believe in God Allah, if you believe in God Yahweh, if you believe in God Jesus, if you believe in any God, regardless the name you call them, you are not different from those children, those kids that don't know any better who believe in Santa Claus. Also, it's like somebody telling you to believe there is dragon. Have you seen dragon? But you read it in your Bible. You hear some people talk about that. Chinese people also do shows about that. They believe that. But have you seen? Nobody has seen dragon. It does not exist. Unicorn, right? Unicorn is in the Bible too. Magic book. Some animals people created in their books. People begin to, or some, 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 uh, some characters, and people begin to take them as the truth. That's what happened in the Bible. You are using the Bible to destroy your own judgment, to destroy your own reason, to destroy your own understanding. Can't you reason? If the Almighty God exists, nothing should prevent Him from showing Himself to everyone. Everyone's supposed to know Him. The Almighty God's supposed to be like the Almighty Light called the Sun. The Sun is the Almighty Light. Without the sunlight, nothing will survive, nothing will live. So you, can, you don't need to pray for the Sun to show itself. The Sun shines, it's natural, it's there. So you don't need to pray for God to show himself, for God to do anything, if that almighty God really exists. So and I will still walk you through that this Psalm 14 to show you that, listen, it is the fool who wrote that in the Bible, what was in his heart. Don't you see, sometimes you say, I'll be stupid to believe that. I'll be stupid to do that. I'll be stupid to do that. that, that you see, that's what, how it is. You cannot tell me I will be stupid to do what you think you cannot do or what you say you cannot do. What you think you cannot do or what you cannot do, somebody else can do it. But you will be the biggest fool to think that everybody will be like you, a foolish person that cannot do what he thinks he cannot do. That's your, yeah, that's your opinion. That's, that's your decision. That's your own fear. But there are people that don't have such fear. They don't live in fear. They're there to do that thing. If, if, they, if it comes to their mind, they try to bring it into reality. So the person that wrote that nonsense in Psalm chapter 14, verse 1 and 53, verse 1, that have made many Africans to see themselves as fools, if they speak the truth and they call the people that speak the truth fools because of that because they read in the, they, wrote, they read in the bible not that they prove their god exists then somebody if you prove to me that your god exists not in words not in books you prove it demonstrate it that your god is it your god can bring us money now we spend it your god can give us cars without us working or buying it or going for somebody your god directly help us to solve any problem i will be a fool to doubt that I don't have to doubt it in my heart. I will say it. That will make me a fool. But I believe in God and Goddess. So I cannot be in the category of the fools who says in their heart, I say with my mouth, there is no God. There's no almighty God anywhere. There's no God. The only almighty God you believe in or worship is imaginary being created by man. Man made that God in his own image. And they created that God to be male, chauvinist, against women. You cannot see a woman around him. You cannot see a woman in his kingdom. According to the religious books. So the fool wrote that in the Bible. 
His thoughts that he could not make public as I've been making my public. The wise declare it in the open, in the public. There is no almighty God anywhere. No almighty God will come and heal you your headache. No almighty God will come and heal you your, sick, and heal your sickness, heal your diseases, or do any good thing for you. No almighty God will come and curse you. No almighty God will come and punish you. No almighty God exists anywhere. You're supposed to know this. Think. Use your, your judgment. Use your reasoning. You use your, Try to understand this simple thing. If Almighty God exists and you believe in that Almighty God, you shouldn't be suffering for any reason. There's no reason for you to be suffering sickness, disease, uh, hardship, or whatever it is in this world. If God is the one that controls the affairs of life. You said there's a higher force. It's human force. Whether you call it higher or lower, or middle, it is still human force, natural force. It has nothing to do with any spiritual being or spirituality. It is our nature. It's part of us. So nobody knows another person's heart. Do you know my heart? You don't know. So how can you say that I'm a fool if I say there is no God? The Bible said the fool say in his heart, not with his, with his mouth. I never said in my heart there is no God. I declare with my mouth there is no almighty God. But there is gods and goddesses. There is no one God. You can never find one God anywhere. You, everywhere you must find gods and goddesses. Male and female. Man and woman. Husband and wife. That is the order. It's a natural order. Anything beyond or less than that is, is not real. It's not the truth. So understand this psalm. I will walk us through that. Nobody knows your heart. I don't know your heart. You don't know my heart. Even God himself don't know your heart. Good night, my dear. Nobody in this world, no, or in any world you believe in, know the content of your heart. So those of you that said, God know the secrets of your heart, is a lie. For God to know the secrets of your heart, according to the Bible, He has to try your heart. He has to test your mind. To know what is in it. Read it in your Bible. At least you can read the story, what happened to Hezekiah in... First Chronicles chapter 32, verse 31. Bible said that God withdrew himself from Hezekiah to test him to know what is in his heart. If God knows Hezekiah, he would have not tested him at all. He will know what is in his heart. Oh, you are in your heart to do some so, so, so things. Even God didn't know when the serpent communicated with Adam and Eve in the garden or with Eve. God didn't know. He came to the garden and said, Adam, Adam, where are you? He don't know a jack as they taught us. He don't know nothing. The God of the Bible, the God of Quran, everyone that believes in the story of Adam and Eve, if you believe that the God created heaven and earth, that God don't know anything that is in your heart. Although you believe he created you, he still has to try your heart. Somebody say, but David, pray, oh Lord, try my, search my heart. To show you God don't know. Why would God don't need to search your heart if he know everything? Psalm 14. Let me see how I will help some of us to understand this. It's, it's easy to understand, but you know, religion corroded our mind, or many people's mind, that simple things seem to be very hard. You know, just as mathematics is very hard to some people, but all of us are supposed to know it. But you see, so, to, to some of us, it's very hard. Some of us never pass mathematics, no matter how simple they made it or they make it. Now, I will walk you through this some four ten to for you to see. Even the place is not talking about people that don't believe in God. Then you will judge with me. Use your judgment, use your sense, and use try to understand what we are reading. Try to understand them. I'm not asking you to think like me. 
I'm not asking you to follow me. I'm just asking you to think for yourself. Think about it. Do, do you know another person's heart? Then how do the person that wrote uh, Psalm 14 one know what is in the in the in the other person and call a fool? The simple thing is this: the person was saying what is in his, what he think, what is in his own heart. He don't know my heart. I don't say there is no God in my heart. I say with my mouth, there is no Almighty God in the sky or in heaven controlling the affairs of life. No. Nature brought everything forth and controls everything. There is no first man and first woman. No. We came into being through nature and we keep reproducing after, 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 after such. Naturally, we have, we produce our kind. Not spiritually, not God is not giving us any children. We are the one that is producing children. A man and a woman have sex together. The woman get get pregnant. Boom, she bring forth. She brought forth or bring forth. So when you read in the Bible, understand? He said from the beginning, he said the note there said to the chief musician a psalm of David. This is not any God saying anything about foolish people. No, he said, this is a psalm of David. David was the one that sang this or that said this. You listen to people singing stuff, they think. That's what they think. That is not the truth. That somebody preach something or teach or teach something or sing something does not make it the truth you must live by. He said, the, the fool has said in his heart. That's what the Bible said. Say it as the Bible says. I post on Facebook, I don't say it in my heart. I speak with my mouth, I don't say it in, in, in my heart. I speak on, in, 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 on, in social media, not in my heart, that there is no almighty God anywhere. Almighty God that cannot show himself on your screen, even do video chat with you. In this time and age, where there is smartphones, that, uh, smart technologies, you can communicate with anyone, anywhere. That God does not exist. That God is not almighty anything. If human beings can, can, show, can see themselves, even right now as I speak, you can request to join in, in this video, in, in, in this uh, live broadcast, and you will appear on this screen. Everybody will see you. But God cannot do that, although you call it or him almighty God. It, I call it. God is an is a it is not God is a thing that people made up, not a person. The fool has said in his heart there is no God. Now hear what he says. He, de, he said they are corrupt. Who are the corrupt people in the world today? Is it not people that believe in God? The presidents of your country, the presidents of the countries of the world. The people that are killing people, people that are corrupt in banks, in businesses, in many, in everywhere, are they not people that believe in God? He said they are corrupt. Who are corrupt? People that believe in God. And the fools are the ones that people influence and they corrupt them to do corrupt, corruptible things. When people fool you to believe there is Almighty God and, and, you, and make you to give your money or give your time for that God, that that God will bless you, you are a fool. You are corrupt. They corrupt you with lies. They corrupt you with deception. Corrupt, they corrupt you with the, with the swelling water or empty water. There is God in heaven that will bless you, that will increase what you have. No God can do that. No God has blessed anyone. It's people that bless themselves and increase what they have. If you don't invest what you have, you will not increase it. If God is the one that gives and increases anything, you don't need to work for money. You don't need to work for food. God is, will be able to give you food and money and be increasing it. He said they are corrupt. They have, they have done abominable works. Who are the ones that have done abominable works in this world? Is he not people that believe in God? Who are the ones that are killing people in the name of Fulani Hesman, in the name of Boko Haram, in the name of ISIS, in the name of terrorists? Are they not people that believe in God? They are the real fools. I call them blind fools, blind idiots. 
they go about killing other people in the name of God. Not because they don't believe in God. They believe in God and they are killing people for that God. They, are, they have done abominable works. Who are the people that make the images of God or images of Mary or images of Jesus? Those things are abominable works. Because those are fiction, fictional characters that people made to others to believe. They corrupt other people's mind to believe that Mary is the mother of God. Although Mary had parents and Mary was created by God, who she happened to be his own mother. Think, people. How can you call Mary the mother of God? How can you call Jesus the son of God? How can you call God? Something your some image or you you know you can make or you can see the picture and they make it to be a white man. There's no black god anywhere. Because black people have been corrupt. You know, they corrupt their mind to believe all this nonsense. He said there is none who does good. The people that enslave Africans, did they do any good to Africans by giving them Christianity, Islam, and Judaism? No. They cemented that wickedness with those religions. They cemented that evil with that religion. Verse 2, he said, The Lord looks down from heaven upon the children of men. You see? Is that true? Have you seen any God? One day you look up, you see God looking down from heaven to you. What looks down from heaven to you? The sun. The sun always looks down on us and blesses us. God never do that. There's no almighty God or almighty Lord in heaven looking down upon the son, the children of men. No. If God is looking down from heaven upon the children of men and is watching all this evil happening in the world, watching people raping uh, uh, adults, raping children, watching people killing people. I, 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 I was somewhere today, somebody came and said, oh, they just killed somebody over there. And you said, God in heaven watching. Oh, upon the children of men. You believe that? God is watching uh, what is happening. And they will allow evil to happen? Because it's evil. He said to see if there is any who understand who seek God. That's crap. You don't need to seek any God. If God exists, just like the sun, do you don't seek the sun? You don't seek, has it, have you heard anyone say he's seeking the sun? No. Why are you seeking God if God exists? Say, who understand? Who seek God? Have you seen anyone that understand God? No, people keep giving different interpretations. No, God is this. God is that. God is like this. God is like that. No, if God exists, we will see him. You are a fool if you are seeking God. If you are seeking after God. If you are trying to understand God, you are a fool because that God does not exist. You are supposed to know God. Of course, I am God. You are God. If you are a woman, you are a goddess. So, I know you, you know me. I don't seek you. He said, I have all turned aside. They have together become corrupt. Is it not what they tell you that all have seen and conscious of the glory of God? Who told you that? Religious leaders, evil men, the same people that are, that are killing people through war, through sla slavery, through many evil forms. They are the ones that tell you that all have seen and conscious of the glory of God, the God they created, the God they made. He said, there is none who does good. No, not one. You see? Even when you do good, their God condemn it. When you do good for yourself and for your family, they say no, because you did not do it in the name of their God. No, you are corrupt. You are evil. You need to be that. You need to be killed. You need to die. As I'm doing good for them, showing them the, 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 the obvious truth they, 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 can, they can judge. They can reason with and they can understand. But they say no, because you say you know like you no longer a Christian, you know, you deserve to die. Because you, you are talking speaking against our God, you are speaking against Jesus, you deserve to die. You see, you don't know how horrible your end will be. <laughs> That's nonsense. Death is death, regardless how you die. Whether you lay your bed and die, or they cut off your head or hang you on a guy is the same thing. Death is death. But why are you afraid of death? 
is because you are afraid of death, you are wishing it to somebody else. But whatever you wish me will first come to you. So before your wish come to me, you will die, and you will die without wish. Nonsense. Verse 4, have all the workers of iniquity no knowledge? Are you telling me those that are going about killing people, making all these laws that are limiting people and suppressing people, are, are you telling me they have no knowledge? They have no, they know what they're doing. You come up today, you, okay, let's say for example, you say you believe in God, and you come up, maybe you, you can make something to cure AIDS, to cure Ebola. Will government allow you a function? They will ask you who authorized you to do that. They will jail you. And they definitely maybe kill you too. The people that are these workers of iniquity, are, do, are you telling me they have no knowledge? They have knowledge. Who eat up my people as they eat bread? <laughs> and it's watching from heaven. No? <laughs> they are eating his people as they eat bread. He's in heaven sitting there. Laughing, and his people that survive say, "Time will come when he will punish the wicked one, which will, the wicked one will die also as you die." Both the wicked and the righteous they will die. That's why everybody has to rise up. It's when you are playing righteous that the wicked will rise in power and suppressing you. But if the wicked know you believe in fairness, you can kill them if they come against you. They will not come against you. They will try to to do business with you. They will try to reason with you. He said, and do not call on the Lord. He says, I don't call on the Lord for anything. Which Lord? The Lord that cannot prevent evil. There are many, many, many people lost their life yesterday in Nigeria. The Lord did not pro pro uh, protect them. Many lost their properties. The Lord did not protect them. But those that survive in the same Nigeria will be telling you, God is good to us. God has been good to me. Since January, he has been protecting me. How about those of your brethren that were killed? He said, no, they don't live in my area. I don't care about that. I care about myself. You are selfish, just like you are God. He said, they, 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 are, they are in great fear. You are living in fear. And you said, the fool said, that, of course, there is no God. If you have God, why are you living in fear? If you have the Almighty God watching over you, if you have the Almighty God living in you, why do you still entertain fear? Why are you afraid of losing heaven? Why are you afraid of going to hell? Why are you afraid of sudden death? Why are you afraid of disease? Why are you afraid of sickness? Why are you afraid of virus? <laughs> why are you afraid of HIV? You say, no, before we marry, you have to do tests. So uh, you say you are doing it uh, holy matrimony. So it's not holy. <laughs> I think in Roman Catholic Church, do you have to do blood tests to say if, if your blood match or blood group or that nonsense? But he says God that joined people together. What well, God joined together? Let me know. So God can join say, people with the same blood group without knowing it, and they are, they begin to burn uh, sickle cell people, children, or that. If God Almighty exists, why are you doing all these tests? Why are you putting people through all that fear? You are afraid, and you say, God is my shepherd. God is my strong tower. God is my refuge. For where? It's just wars. Stop that and save yourself. Hear what he said. He said, God is with the generation of the righteous. Where? Where is God with the generation of the righteous? Show me. Nowhere. Hear what he said again. He said, you shame the counsel of the poor. You see that wicked God. How, how, if God loves people, and if God is God of, of justice, a fair God, why, why would such God, you know, shame the counsel of the poor? Or, I mean, why would that God allow anyone to shame the counsel of the poor? If you are poor, you will go to jail for minor case. But the rich will commit very big, very big crime. They will not smell jail. Imagine if you are the one that have committed the, all the crimes that Donald Trump, the president of America, has committed. And you are living in America like me. If I commit 1% of what Donald Trump committed in America, I would have been rotten in jail now. Because I don't have money to pay the lawyers to come and lie for me and defend me. 
But at least some people will still count him among the generation of the righteous because they believe if you are making it, oh, it's God. <laughs> Even if you kill to make it, they believe it's God. He said, you shame the counsel of the poor, but the Lord is his refuge. Where is God the refuge for the poor? The poor people suffering. Many children dying out of hunger. Women and men starved to death. Even in Yemen, supported by American government. What happened to Nigerian Biafran war? They starved people to death. And you say, God is their refuge for the poor. For where? It's just a lie they put in the Bible to deceive you. He said, oh, that the salvation of Israel will come out of Zion. For we are quit Israel. Israel that never existed. Fake Israel. <laughs> the one that took people's land that said they are the choosing one. Say, oh, that the salvation of the Lord of Israel will come out from of Zion. No, salvation of Israel is coming from America. Without America, American government, Israel would have the Israel they created in 1914 would have gone 48 would have gone. The Israel you have today is not this Israel in the Bible. And the Israel you have today, the God that is sending salvation to, for them is the American government. With uh, withdraw American government from Israel, you will see the owner of the land will take their land <laughs> as 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 an auto. He said, when the Lord bring back the cap captivity of the people, let Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad. When will God bring back your captivity? You Africans that are still in slavery, when will that God you believe in, Jehovah, Yahweh, Allah, when will that God, Jesus, when will that God you believe in, set you free? No God will come and set you free. You are the one that will set yourself free. Now you hear me. I am not a fool for saying the truth that imaginary God doesn't exist. I am only a fool to those to those foolish people who believe in the in the Almighty God that they cannot see themselves. I'm only a fool to those stupid people that believe in the Almighty God that cannot show Himself or show up to help them in their time of need. A God that cannot show himself to you, he does not exist. A God that cannot show up and help you in your time of need does not exist. Wake up. When you're talking about calling people fool, huh? think about it. Jesus did not call those who said there is no God fools in your Bible. Who did Jesus call fools in your Bible? Those who believe in God and they were leaders of God's people and teachers of the law of God. They are the ones that Jesus called fools. Let me show you again. So you know who you should be calling your fool. Supposed to be calling your pope fool. Supposed to be calling your apostle fool. Supposed to be calling your bishop fool. Anyone that is leading you in a religious matter or spiritual matter, they are the fools. And let me show you how Jesus called them because I, I just called say they are fools, right? Let's see what Jesus called them. In your Bible. Remember, it's the same Jesus that says if you call people fool, if you call somebody fool, you are in danger, you, are, you will go to hell, right? But let us see if Jesus called people fool or not. Let me read from 1 and 2 so you understand who Jesus was talking about. He was not talking about people that said there is no God. So when you said the fool said in his heart there is no God, and so that's true. There's no God. Have you seen that God? No. So in verse 1 and 2, then Jesus spoke to the multitudes and the disciples and his disciples, saying, The scribes the scribes, teachers of the law, and the Pharisees, enforcers of the law, sit in Moses' seat. Moses, the servant of God. <laughs> they sit in Moses' seat. In other words, they are taking the place of Moses to teach and lead the people of Israel. People that believe in God of Israel. They are the ones Jesus is talking about. Then skip to verse 16 and 17. And hear what Jesus called them. Hear what Jesus said. Woe to you blind guides. 
what to you blind guys who say whoever swear by the temple is it is not him, but whoever swear by the god of the temple he is obliged to perform it Jesus called the servants of God. Jesus called the ministers of God. Jesus called the scribes and Pharisees who are teaching and leading God's people blind guys, blind leaders. Because you are leaders, those who are pastors, those who are priests, those who are spiritual leaders, they know that that God does not exist. But because they are extorting money from you, because they are robbing you every week, they keep teaching you that lie. Woe to them. That's what Jesus is saying. <laughs> it's in your Bible, not me. <laughs> so, <laughs> verse 17, hear what Jesus called them. Fools and the blind. So, bl are blind fools. Who is the blind fools? In Matthew chapter 23, verse 17. Scribes and the Pharisees, people that believe in God, people that teach the law of God, people that enforce the law of God, leading God's people, Jesus called them blind fools. <laughs> he said fools and blind, for which is greater, the God or the temple that, san that sanctifies the gold? They don't know. What is greater? They don't know what is better. All they know is what the law says. The law says you must do this. The law says this is what we, how we interpret the law. And that's how you must keep it. Verse 19. <laughs> Hear what Jesus called them again. Fools and blind. For which is greater the gift or the altar that sanctifies the gift? How many times have Jesus called them blind fools? First, he called them blind guides, blind leaders. They are leading you blindly. You don't know. You are following them. And you are following in the same pit with them. Pit of deception. Pit of error. Pit of fear. Pit of evil. You are following the same pit with them. Two times now, he has called them blind fools. Fools and blind. Fools and blind. They are fools. It's not people that say there is no God that Jesus called fools in your Bible. It's people that believe there is God. Alright? That's verse 19. Then go to verse 24. Hear what he called them again. Blind guys. Remember, according to Bible, Jesus said that, right? Every truth must be established by two or three witnesses. Right? That is the law of God in your Bible. Two times, Jesus have called them blind leaders. Two times, Jesus have called them blind fools. I'm not the one that called them. You are Jesus called them. If you said I am wrong for calling people blind fools or blind idiots for coming fighting against the truth, hear what Jesus is calling those who sit in the seat of Moses, in the religious seat, in the temple of God or in the house of God, teaching people the law of God and enforcing the law of God in the land. He called them blind fools. He called them blind leaders. Mm. Then, let's see verse 3, the last place I will read on uh, in that regard. And Jesus said there, serpents. Jesus called them serpents. <laughs> So when you say I'm an agent of Satan, and you know Bible says Satan is the serpent, right? Okay. Jesus called them Satan. <laughs> Satan's. <laughs> Devils. Jesus called the ministers of God serpents. The serpent, the same serpent that deceived Adam and Eve in the, in the garden, still going on. He called them serpents, brood of vipers. That is Jesus to people that believe in God. You who believe in God that you cannot see is the blind fool. When you quote Psalm 14 and said, the fool has said there is no God is wrong. But when you quote it right saying, the fool has said in his heart there is no God. Then you are the blind fool to believe there is God that you cannot see. A God that cannot show himself 
to the world. A God that cannot show up and help you, even you, in your time of need. That God does not exist. And for you believing in such God, you are the fool. Fool is the one who is deficient in what? Judgment, in sense, and under, or understanding. What happened? When you say, judge not, thou shalt not judge. You're saying you are a fool. Fools don't judge. The wise judge. The wise make right, right judgment. You're telling me there is almighty God that made me? You say yes. I need to see that almighty God. They say, oh, you cannot see him. Then he does not exist. If almighty God exists, as you know him, knowing somebody means you see the person, not believing. If God exists, you don't have to believe God. You have to know God. That's what I've been saying. If you believe Jehovah exists, if you believe Allah exists, if you believe Yahweh, Yahweh exists, if you believe Jesus exists, then see him. Until you see him, you are a fool believing exists or defending it. At least if you believe that's different, but when you begin to defend it, you are a blind fool. Because if such almighty God, almighty Jesus exists, He's supposed to show himself. Especially when you read your Bible, Jesus said he's not a spirit. He's half flesh and bones like you. You're supposed to see Jesus. Use your sense, your common sense. Think. How can I be giving my thing, my substance to a God I cannot see? Simple because it's written in a book or somebody preached to me said that is the commandment of God. If you don't do it, the wrath of God will come upon you. Let that God burn with his own anger. I will never give that God a dime. If God need money from me, let him come to me directly. Why should you be the one taking care of the servants of God? God who created heaven and earth should be able to care for his own servants. Come on, wake up people. Let me close with this. You're supposed to know this. Fools live by faith. Anyone that says he's living by faith is a fool. Fools live by faith and believes. Why are you attacking my faith? How are you speaking against my belief? Believe what you want and leave others to believe what they want. Stop believing. Stop faithing. Begin to walk by facts. The wise live by facts. And everyone that is preaching faith is living by facts. They are hypocrites. You are a pastor who is preaching about heaven or God in heaven doing anything. And that pastor is building mansion, buying private jet or buying expensive cars. That pastor is a hypocrite. He's not living by faith. If your pastor is living by faith, if your pope is living by faith, if your bishop is living by faith, if your, sp your spiritual leader is living by faith, tell them to sell everything they have, give it to the poor, and follow that God they believe in. You will see how they will curse you. They will begin to tell you, how will I feel my children? But you say you are a servant of God. God cannot provide for you and your children, and you are his servant. You pro every man provides for their servants. If you have housemaid or house help in your house, you provide for them. Now God cannot provide for his servant in his own house, but they deceive you that they are living by faith. Living faith church, living faith uh, chap uh, chapel, all those nonsense. House of faith. Which faith? You cannot live in this world by faith or beliefs. You have to live in this world by facts. And the fact is this, what you sow, you reap. You want to eat, go and walk. Make your own food, unless you are a thief, or a fool, or animal. Animals don't walk. Animals don't make their food, they just eat. <laughs> so, understand that. The fools live by faith and beliefs. Faith and beliefs in God. Religion is belief in supernatural being that do something or controls uh, the world. That's religion. But the wise live by facts. And I welcome you to, do that, to that world of facts where you judge everything, where you reason everything, and where you understand everything. When the, anyone that tells you you cannot know everything is a fool who is living by faith and belief. And that's how they got that fool. 
and they are the ones that love their chains. They, are, they love their chains of faith and belief. But you can set yourself free if you still believe in and stop believing. Start knowing. When you know the truth, the truth you know will set you free because you will, you will demonstrate that knowledge of the